Hello everybody and welcome back. So I have something pretty cool to show you. Uh, it's definitely an achievement. So uh, let's go see that. And uh, then I think we'll get into some time lapses. So coming into the bathroom, there is one feature that's quite obvious in the room. That's quite stark in comparison to all the other colors. And that is the sink. Uh, now, yes, there is no bowl currently. Uh, I have to attach that. And uh, you'll see how I'm going to do that in some of the time lapses and I'll discuss it. Um, and these are just sitting in here. Uh, they're not attached. However, I did think I fixed the uh, packing washer issue here, so I shouldn't have any leaks. Uh, I tested this one last night. It seemed to have worked, but I won't really know until I have the supply lines, which is this right here, or one of them. Uh, this basically runs from the pipes down there up to the tap, makes the whole thing work. I guess you probably could get that. <laughs> So uh, let's get in some time lapses. I'll show you how I got here and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so you saw the time lapses. Uh, let me take this sink upstairs, uh, flip it upside down, and we're gonna go ahead and install that bowl. Okay, so the sink. We've got it back upstairs, um, and you can now see the underside a bit clearer. Uh, so these are where the original brackets were. They look like this. Um, I've cleaned these up a little tiny baby bit, but originally this only had four brackets, one in each corner. Um, and I guess that was sufficient to hold it. However, um, two of these failed. This one sheared off completely uh, some time ago, and this one completely pulled out of the marble. So I did some research, trying to figure out how people are mounting undermounted sinks like this, and uh, this is the solution I came up with. Essentially, these are glued on with epoxy. Uh, you can see in the time lapse, they actually roughly sanded this so it had a place to key into, uh, the glue did. So I used 60 grit sandpaper to prep these areas to make sure it had a good place to key to so these won't be going anywhere. And I used more than the recommended amount because of course I want this thing to stay put. Uh, I am going to use the two mounting brackets uh, that are original um, to the sink um, as well because why not, they're there. Um, but essentially, here's how it works. You put the bowl down, you can see where I've marked out my line around. You put the bowl down, you put these little feet on it. That's the wrong way around a washer and a wing nut. 
And uh, there you go. Kim's coming in all sneakily, <laughs> stealthily with the bowl, so. You want to see the sink going in? Or the bowl? Oh, hello. So, yeah, like so. Let's drop these down, adjust them where you need them. Oh, that's an old one. My bad. There we go. A nut, a washer and a nut, Very and nice. uh, you're good to go. But of course, before any of this happens, you have to seal the bowl to this. Uh, we're going to be using a silicone uh, caulk for that. Um, where, yeah, we're not using the plumber's putty. I will use the plumber's putty on this, but this is like porcelain. Uh, although it is kind of cool because... You want me to pick it up? Yeah, can. That'll be easier. I can do it with one hand, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, it has uh, some like faint marbling in here, which is kind of cool. It's obviously faux. This isn't marble or alabaster or anything like that. It's porcelain. Um, but yeah, there's our new drain. So pretty. Yeah. Uh-oh. Water's going to... Hang out here. It won't be too bad. Okay. So uh, that's what we got going on. So we do have to run real quick. Uh, we will be back quickly. Uh, we do have to run to one of our favorite little salvage places around town uh, to find some trim for the bathroom because what they were using as trim in that bathroom is actually the top cap that goes around the wainscoting in the bathroom. So we have to go get that really quickly or find something that's appropriate. We don't need very much, luckily, or else we'd have the original stuff cut again. Um, but when you only need 10 feet of it, it seems like a bit of cost unnecessarily. So we're going to run do that, and then uh, you guys will see a time lapse of the sink being put together and hopefully completely installed. We might even have running water. Oh, please let us have running water. So uh, we'll see you guys then. Here we are under the sink and we have the hot water attached. Um, you can see it leads up to the fixture there. Um, and it's got a kind of unique system here. I'm sure it's not unique, let's say, but it's a type of connection that I've not used before. Um, so let me come up here on top of the sink and I'll show you the parts for the other one. So here's the other supply line here. As you can see, it's it's actually a solid brass tube. Um, of course, it's a bit flexible, which is nice because when you have to move around down there because things aren't perfectly straight, you need them to be able to be flexy, and I'm sure it's designed that way. Um, and here is the shutoff valve for the cold water. You can see the little C on it. But this has been a bit of a pain, and let me explain why. This uh, nut that I have on here at the end, I actually had to go to Lowe's and buy. This didn't come with this. Um, what I found initially was this, which is a compression nut. And you can see at the end of this, how it has a little flange. There's actually two little flanges here. So it steps up and then it steps up into this, like this bulbous thing. Um, so essentially I figured, okay, it's a half inch. The fixtures are half inch at the bottom. So it'll be a half inch fitter compression cap and you'll compress that bulb up into the bottom of the faucet. Um, however, <laughs> For some reason, um, not all half inches are created equal. Um, in fact, I don't exactly know which one is perfectly half inch, uh, maybe neither of them, but these are both half inch and the thread pattern is the same, but this one's bigger and this one's smaller. Both half inch, I don't understand. You go to Lowe's or to any big box store, I guess in the US, and for some reason, there are three different sizes, all of them referred to as half inch. I'm like, how amazingly confusing is that? And of course, all of the compression nuts are only um, this half inch, which doesn't work. Um, however, this one, I don't even know what this fitting is called. Uh, I forget, I have it on the packaging over there. But essentially, there was too much wiggle room in this. It's not compressing this all the way, like that one would if it would fit. So what I've done here is I've taken these O-rings and I've pushed them all the way up here and then I run my nut and pull them all the way through. Um, and then on top of that, I place 
one last little o-ring on top and then screw the whole thing together um, I'm hoping that gives me two separate gaskets to not let any moisture through uh, now I would love to test that since I already have this one hooked up but since I don't have a hot water heater yet um, the hot water line won't work so even though that's hooked up on everything the lines are dry whereas this one when I do hook it up it's cold water it's the cold water tap so it should um, have water coming through it so this should be the tap I use um, right now but we'll see if this little fix I found uh, works mm, it'll be an interesting one so uh, let me get the time-lapse camera set back up and uh, we'll go ahead and install this and hopefully um, I won't get wet so uh, fingers crossed let's do this also want to show you guys uh, something that uh, came in the mail uh, my tile it's here and it's absolutely gorgeous um, so this is the pattern we're doing uh, this is the border as you can see in the little white bit of trim here um, ends on the reds like this. Um, will that work completely through the room 100% all of the time? I'm probably not. Um, you know, the room's dimensions are the room's dimensions, but at least when you step in, this will be the pattern as you walk in. And uh, underneath the bath, or underneath the, uh, the sink is uh, where this pattern might go out slightly. But I mean, really, really beautiful stuff. Nice, you know, quarter inch thick tile. Good stuff, all the way from England. <laughs> but it's here, it's, uh, it's looking really nice, and uh, hopefully we ordered enough. Um, the tile experts said we had enough, so fingers crossed. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You just witnessed the very first hand washing I've accomplished with a sink in this house. Yes, I've used buckets. Yes, I've used my water hose and spigot. And yes, we've had water in the house for a while, but that was the first time doing it in a sink. And ooh, it feels good. Oh, 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 it feels good. Um, okay. It was about the third time hand washing. I couldn't control myself and I had to get in there and test it out. Um, and yes, we have a few problems with the sink still. Uh, one of them being that the uh, hot water tap does not work. Uh, most because I haven't had a hot water heater installed, so this line is dead. Um, but that's all right, we'll get to that at some point. And then you can see we've got a wee little drip here. Um, I've found a way mostly to fix the packings that are in here. Basically, I just tighten them up really tight. There was some elasticity uh, in these left, the rubber O-rings I showed you guys last week, uh, the bushings, the packing washers, that's the correct term. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they were cracked and they're a bit brittle. Um, however, they are still doing a pretty fair job considering before I couldn't do this at all. So, you know, and yes, lots and lots and lots of water pressure. We have a two inch pipe coming into the house, two inch copper line, and uh, there's a lot of pressure on this right now because it's the only thing really hooked up to it other than the water hose downstairs in the basement and uh, one other tap that we have for a sink in the basement, which I don't use terribly often. 
And yes, you can see I have my Quick Orange or off-brand Quick Orange, which is the pumice hand cleaner, which is crucial when you're dealing with gross stuff like I am up here. Uh, mechanics or carpenters or other trades people will know this soap well and love it, and I do as well. And I brought it with me just for an occasion to be able to wash my hands in here. And now here under the sink, you can see my fancy dancy shut off valves. Um, so to the right, they're off. And uh, actually, this is what I've been doing so far today to stop the leaking faucet is just shut it off at the source here. Um, and with that thing leaking a little bit, we do have it dripping down through the marble because I have not siliconed those taps to the sink quite yet. Um, to be honest with you, I kind of forgot about that. I was quite excited about having water and uh, that ended up not being so much of a priority. However, if that's the worst of it, I mean, literally it's been hours and that's all we've gotten. Uh, that's the worst of it. So, uh, <laughs> I have to say, quite, quite happy. And uh, this fitting right here, which is just a compression fitting, is the only thing I really had leaked so far. I'm quite impressed with myself, I have to say, with my triple O-ring, basically parts bin fix that I've done up there. Um, hasn't leaked once at all. So, I uh, have to say, rather impressed with my ingenuity in figuring that out because uh, that was a bit of a tough cookie to crack. And really, just look at it, guys. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's everything I've ever wanted and more. Now we're not 100% done with it. Um, we have to get some side panels here, basically a, uh, a backsplash, um, which I have another piece of marble, uh, which I went and picked up the other day. So uh, let me show you that really quickly. So here's my little slab here in the kitchen, basically just on the other side of where the sink is. Uh, and this will end up being cut up for the backsplash. I bought myself a little wet saw. Uh, it's on a table saw, it's a handheld variety. And uh, you guys will see that next week because uh, I'll pop that in place and protect the beadboard. Also, I told you guys the also told you guys the other day that I was going to look for a piece of trim, and I found one. Not only did I find a piece of trim, I found the trim. This is the house's trim. This is the trim from the well, let's say lesser areas, the maid's room, uh, most of the bathrooms, the kitchen have this exact trim. Now, of course, I only found one piece, but I mean, it's enough to do this room because all I have to do is the one side of the doorway and the top. And I've previously mentioned to you guys that Kim's craft room or what was previously the maid's room, uh, actually the trim was so rotten in that area that I had to replace it regardless. And I have a few scrap pieces of this lying around. So this is absolutely perfect. So this will get the this trim and a rosette from Kim's room because we replaced those with flowers or we are going to replace those with uh, flower rosettes, a different style. And uh, this will work beautifully because it's the actual trim from the house. I just get lucky sometimes and uh, to be able to find this exact trim pattern in the salvage yard, pretty cool. Super excited about that. Uh, who knows, there's a few missing pieces of trim from around the house. Maybe this is from the house and maybe I just brought it back home. So, uh, you know, nice thought to have at least, right? And for those who are completely um, not used to these, uh, British people aside, um, these are what's, or these are non-mixing taps. So hot water here, cold water here, they are completely separate. They mix in the bowl. And that's why having this center point here is so important. You have this little stop, you toss it in the bottom here, and then you can mix in the tap and wash your hands and whatever temperature water you want because you have the option of adding hot and cold to it. So this is a very Victorian style of doing things. Again, unless you're in Britain, which is a more of a modern day way of doing things. Uh, but this is definitely an antiquated system and it'll take a little bit of getting used to for us. But uh, you can't argue with how beautiful these items were. I mean, these taps came to us really, really dented and dinged and, and uh, certainly not shiny, definitely very corroded. Uh, a lot of patina, which I know a lot of people don't want me to take off of things, but I mean, they're back where they should be. They're in a sink that makes sense. They're in a room that makes sense and a house that makes sense. And I am quite excited about it. And I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm quite giddy. Like this is such a serious step in the right direction. I mean, having water, I guess so many people overlook that fact, right? Like. It's not something you think about in every day. You just turn on the tap and it just happens to be there. But when you don't have it in a place for so long, or you have it in such weird ways, like a water hose, you know, a simple thing like washing your hands or 
uh, since I have a little kitchen here set up now, um, you know, just washing a simple dish or a fork becomes something you do with a baby wipe. And it's not terribly exciting to do it that way. It's not, you know, nice. It's not the way, I guess, we expect to live these days. And so having a functional sink, I don't know, it's, it's really cool. And like kind of seeing this whole room to come together is awesome. I really love it. Like it's gonna be the first room in the house completed. And it was one of the nastiest, grossest rooms. Uh, I mean, for those of you who followed the whole way, we had to rip the entire floor out of this place. There's some new floor in here. All the walls had to be replastered. There's all these weird angles that were real difficult. I spent weeks doing this stencil pattern here, which still wasn't 100%. And to strip all the nastiest paint off these windows up here, all that linseed oil paint and all the faux grating that was just messed up beyond belief so it wasn't usable. And now we're getting really close. I mean, next week it's gonna be beadboard. We're gonna have electrical. I got the tiles in, so on the 8th, 9th, 10th, somewhere around then, we're gonna have those installed. The toilets, all that's really missing is the a new spud in the back, and the tank is all new, and it's just installing it. We're so close to having a completed room, and it just feels amazing. Um, yeah, I really can't, I'm glowing. I'm like so excited about this because I mean, it's just a step in the right direction. And I think once you have one of these smaller rooms, these smaller accomplishments done, it, it really drives you to do that next bit. It, it pushes you. It, it's that moment where, okay, this area is messed up, this area is messed up, but I can walk into this one room and see the vision and really, really just feel it and, and, and enjoy my house. Ah, I just am so excited. It's been a, such an amazing week. It's not been a, an easy week by any means. It's been a lot of trial and error and a lot of creative problem solving, which I think are areas I thrive in and I've had a great deal of fun doing this. Man, this was a good one. So next week, hopefully we'll get ourselves the door frame in, get some electrical, get the sconces I've promised for a while but up, get the top cap around the whole beadboard wainscoting up, I mean, there's a lot of things I want to do. Uh, we'll see how much I get of it done next week, but it's been an absolute blast. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to leave you guys with a quick little time lapse of me putting together the toilet seat upstairs, which has finally gotten its few coats of water locks. It is ready to be installed. So uh, enjoy that. I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys next Monday or maybe midweek. Who knows? We never know in the world out here. 